And I'm gonna give a talk, this talk on uh, GeoGit. And, okay, hang on with this auto advance thing. Let me see if I can. Okay, that's better. Did this work? Yes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give a talk about uh, GeoGit based OSM workflows and um, really the path to a more distributed future for OSM. So just some uh, background on GeoGit. Uh, we've been working on it for a couple of years, a uh, year and a half, something like that. And um, what we've basically done is adapted the core concept or verbs of Git to work with spatial data. And um, the project began after we did a lot of experimentation with GeoJSON in Git. And um, you know, it's, it's really cool, all the people doing this GeoJSON and Git stuff these days, but uh, I think they're quickly re you know, reaching the same uh, realization about the limitations that we reached several years ago. And so we started on GeoGit, and uh, the library is written in Java, and there's a command line interface. And it can I import and export common spatial formats, including OSM, using Osmosis. And uh, we use pluggable database backends, so Berkeley database uh, for embedded uh, client-side stuff, and Mongo, uh, BDB, and Spatial Light for embedded stuff, and Mongo, and recent work on HBase and things like Ceph um, for the backend. And uh, there's a GeoTools data store and a GeoServer extension, uh, so you can get OGC services off of. Uh, uh, GeoGit repository, and we've recently been working on a lightweight, scalable, RESTful server written in Scala and Akka, and I'm told Scala is a hipster-approved language, so that's kind of fun. Um, so just basic GeoGit commands and workflow, uh, it's much like Git, of course. So in a, you know, in a repository, import from various various databases or shape files, things like that, OSM. Um, commit, branch, merge, clone, push, pull, all the sort of things you're used to in Git. Here's a graphic of the, the workflow. So you take your spatial data, import it into your working tree, uh, commit it into a staging area and into the repository database, and then you can push and pull from a remote repository. Um, and there's a whole suite of GeoGit OSM commands. So you can do uh, GeoGit OSM download using the Overpass API is great. I think Overpass is one of the more underused uh, tools in the OSM stack. It's really great. I, I wish somebody would write a nice uh, query interface for that. Uh, you still got to write the queries pretty much manually. Um, and then you can do GeoGit OSM import using XML or PBF files. Um, and then we, you do uh, o OSM map or unmap using uh, Imposum style JSON mapping so that converts um, the nodes and ways into trees or layers like we're used to working with in traditional GIS space. Um, and then you can do an update, OSM update, or apply a change set so that allows you to keep in sync with Planet. Um, and then you can export, uh, export out to OSM files, um, or you can create a change set, uh, OSMC file, to push back to Planet. So the, the benefits of using OSM and GeoGit together, it's really easy to prepare OSM data for use in traditional GIS, including doing edits and sending changebacks back to Planet. Um, and really that's important. We're trying to work towards bi-directional workflows between OSM and schema-based layer data. So you know, the whole traditional GIS space work, doesn't work on the concept of nodes and ways and tags. They work with uh, layers that have a schema, and so um, really getting that bi-directional workflow so you can both push traditional layers into, an, into OSM or pull OSM data into your repository and um, convert it into schema-based schema -based data. And so the other thing, big benefit is it, it sort of has much better handling for dealing with merge conflicts. We don't really deal with merge conflicts that, that well in traditional in, in the OSM. And so um, the goal behind a lot of the things we do in GeoGit is to manage uh, merge conflicts much better. So, and then we, we much like Git, we have this concept of uh, pre and post commit hooks, which are used to um, enforce topological constraints or other you know, uh, attribute based constraints. And then you can use it also to provide notification of edits. Um, and so this is, we've actually just recently began, be, been able to uh, experiment with some of these ideas. We did this project with the American Red Cross and GFDR. They had a great series of talks earlier. And so this was pulling um, medical facilities, hospitals, um, points where people can get money, pulling them out of OSM and into this uh, geonode where you can, um, people can download those layers and use them in, in a traditional GIS. Um, and so this talk is really about doing imports, um, imports with uh, GeoGit into OSM. And so um, Surge uh, has recently written a series of blog posts about um, the benefits and the sort of uh, stumbling blocks to imports, and so I thought I'd just go over them. So um, the case for imports is really, it helps bootstrap areas with little or no data. 
Um, and then uh, Colin gave a talk yesterday about their work with uh, NYC Do It and doing imports. And so, you know, we find in our work, we work with a lot of authoritative data agencies, and um, we find that they really want to be able to contribute to, on to OSM in an ongoing fashion rather than just dump some data over the wall and call it a day. Um, and so, Authoritative data is often more complete and accurate in specific areas, but that's certainly not always the case. Um, and imports obviously can augment community-generated data for certain types of features that can't be easily crowdsourced or in places without an active community. And the case against imports is really um, uh, OSM's data model is a little bit uh, difficult for these kinds of agencies to understand um, that, you know, again, they don't work in, in nodes and ways and trees, OSM being essentially a graph database. They're used to working in um, single layers that are based on a, a, a schema. And then we have this, this sort of quandary of official versus authoritative data. Um, it's, I, I guess a lot of people assume that authoritative data uh, or official data is, is, is good and accurate, and, and often it's not. It's uh, collected for a specific purpose. Um, oftentimes with people that don't get paid very much, and it's, it's, it's not always, you know, great data. Um, and then the, the, the real big problem is the, the, the issue of doing corrections or updates, which I'll go into in a second. And then, you know, I'm not a lawyer, and I don't really want to dive down the licensing rat hole, but um, share alike can really prevent uh, the original data, data provider from incorporating community edits back into their own data sets, because um, it sort of infects them and requires them to, to uh, share all of their data. And then, you know, there is the issue of community demotivation. I live, uh, we'll look at some slides, but in, in where I live, all the data was in, has been imported and um, it's, you know, it's sort of demotivating to go out. There's not much to map. Um, I mean, I can go map buildings and businesses and stuff, but like by and large, everything's been imported and been kept pretty far up to date. So um, the, I'll just dive into the problems of maintaining imports because this is the, seems to be the crux issue. Um, you know, the imports are essentially a fork of the original data and I'll, I'll dive into that a little, little deeper. Um, and then we have this problem that um, in, the, in the entire history of OSM, there's very, very, very few examples of people maintaining updates over time, uh, imports over time. So they, they do an import and um, they're nearly always unmaintained. So, and, and that's often because reconciliation with the original data is difficult and this, you know, again, the, the complex uh, objects and the graph nature of OSM versus the, the layer-based data of most, the, the source data. And then there's a whole range of problems around the use of external IDs. Um, those can change. Um, sometimes the, you don't know which, you know, if, uh, if an address is pegged to a particular building and somebody splits that into a set of buildings, um, the external IDs aren't that useful. And I've heard this complaint that, um, Things that have official, official looking external IDs demotivate people from mapping, and I can appreciate that. Um, but conflation, conflation can really detect these kinds of merge conflicts, but they, they should be reviewed manually, and uh, that can be really tedious. And tools like Map, Map Roulette can help with that, but it's, it's still a pretty tedious process. So here's um, some earlier ideas around this concept. This is uh, my friend Jak in, in uh, Slovenia? No. Anyway, somewhere up there in the, in the north. But anyway, he uh, came up with this idea. There's a proposal on the wiki about um, having an OSM database and then a series of external databases and then using this concept of an open meta map to link things together, perhaps using an osmosis plugin and then rendering them together. So it, it really, um, instead of importing data directly into OSM, you're doing, you're just linking external data sets. Um, and he put the proposal up, and there was some discussion about it, and there's some, there are some certainly difficult problems to contend with, and so it's been sort of shelved, and uh, I'm not, sh not sure uh, if it's going to get picked back up, but it's, it, it was an, an interesting early idea. So um, the real thing, this concept of distributing OSM rather than having a central single data set is, is an interesting one, and um, the, the, uh, you know, the, the idea here is... Um, that you can pull a subset of OSM into a GeoGit repository, and whether that's a fork or not is, is kind of an open question. Um, the, the map, the, the, the nodes and ways are mapped to schema-based layers. Um, the link to the original OSM is maintained. The ID and the change set, change set ID and the nodes and the tags, all that sort of stuff is preserved in the, in the GeoGit repository. Um, and it's possible then to work with those layers in a traditional GIS, which again, we hear that a lot from our customers and our stakeholders that they want to work with GeoGit data or OSM data in their you know, traditional GIS. And then um, again, it's easy to pull updates from Planet. So you can just 
pull and grab, update your local repository, uh, apply change sets, um, that sort of thing. Um, and then, it's again, you can detect merge conflicts and they must be dealt with. You can't just uh, override them. You, you, you've got to deal with them much like when you, when you, when you do a merge in, or pull in Git, you, 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 you're obligated to deal with the change set. Um, and then edits that are made in your local repository can be used to generate change sets and push them back to planet. Um, so the real, one of the real goals is, for the, is the ability for uh, local or domain specific groups, thematic, thematic groups to handle pull requests in the local repo, in, in, in the local repository before pushing to planet. That's kind of an important concept I hear, um, hear that a lot from local groups. Like I, if somebody's gonna do a big import or do a bunch of edits in my area, I'd like to have them reviewed by the local community before they just push them into planet. Um, and so imports into, into and the GeoGit kind of offer a lot of um, advantages. Uh, the, data, the data that's imported, that repository can be made public so you can have multiple participants working on it together um, by cloning that repo and working with it and then pushing and pulling all to that local repository. Um, and then layer-based, normal layer-based data can be imported um, into the same repo. And conflation, the conflation step happens locally, not, not in Planet. Um, and so then ongoing updates to Planet can be merged in and the merge conflicts dealt with, like I mentioned. And the diff, once you've got a local repository with some changes in it, the diff between that and Planet can easily be generated at any point. It can be inspected by you know, the, the data working group or others. And you know, of course the change that's only applied back to Planet when the um, merge, concept, merge conflicts have been resolved to the satisfaction of the community. Um, so here's just an example. I live in San Diego and um, our, uh, I've never met the guy that, that did this, but um, all the data, or this set of layers, um, building footprints, military bases, national parks, bus stops, and addresses were all imported um, in roughly 2006. And you probably can't read it, but what's um, highlighted there is that there is currently no plan to replace the streets in OSM with the streets from Sanjis. Um, but here's an example. This is um, uh, where my in-laws live. And you can see that the original street import was done with Tiger. And then later, the addresses were imported. And clearly, there's some streets there that are missing. And the addresses are all there, but the, the streets are missing. Um, and so I can go on to my local open data portal from the county Joint Powers Agency. I can download the roads layer. Um, I import it into a GeoGit repository. Um, I've got a whole series of layers there from the from the Sand, Sandags uh, repository. And now I've gone and pulled in a, a set of a set of data from OSM again using an overpass query. And you can see on the right uh, how that looks in this uh, GeoGit server. This RESTful. Um, RESTful server. So I, I'm, I'm looking at OSM data in that. Um, and then. What I've done next is pulled the roads data from the county into that same repository. And here's that same neighborhood, a little bit different scale. But you can see all the places where there's red and no blue. Those, are the, 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 those roads exist in the authoritative data set, but not in OSM. Um, and of course, I can just go and digitize all those things in normally. But doing that for the whole county is kind of an onerous process. So. Um, We've been working, uh, we, we started to work on some uh, conflation tools in QGIS, working on a GeoGit QGIS plugin. And um, you can see the history of the repository there. You can see a diff I've calculated between um, the, the, the data that's been extracted uh, from the conflation process and dumped into the GeoGit repository. And so this concept of generating and applying change sets works more or less like this. You extract features that, that exist in the source data but not in OSM. We could cherry pick essentially cherry pick those changes into the map layers and trees, unmap them back to node and way trees or layers, um, create a change set, upload it to OSM, and then of course just rinse and repeat when the source data changes. And that's really the key is that um, the, uh, the current process now, uh, nobody's, I, I, again, I, I, I don't, there's very few if any examples of people updating imports over time, even though it's, it's always talked about um, it's pretty rare examples of that. So just to be, you know, in, in sake of transparency, some of the current limitations of uh, GeoGit in this sort of process, um, GeoGit's still really only scalable to country and continent sized data sets, um, not including Europe. I've not been able to import all of Europe yet, uh, but uh, all the other continents. And it's unclear if this paradigm will scale to the number of committers that are actually enga actively engaged in contributing to OSM. I mean, there's could be hundreds of thousands of committers at any one time. And um, a few people per pointed out that this process is really a lossy conversion because um, the relations, we don't really handle for relations. Again, 
OSM is essentially a graph database and uh, GeoGit itself is really um, just deals with things in layers. That doesn't mean we can't uh, handle for top topology and uh, the, the relations in the graph, but it's not currently handled for. And um, I don't know how many of you use Git on a regular basis, but uh, I remember getting up the learning curve with Git. It's, it's a pretty steep learning curve. We're, again, trying to reduce some of that by putting a lot of the functionality into, into a QGIS plugin, but uh, it is a pretty steep learning curve. And the, the code base itself has a pretty steep learning curve and currently a pretty small contributor base. We've, we've actually got a, quite a few students from the Facebook Open Academy program, and uh, it's been interesting with them getting up the learning curve, and it's uh, learned a lot of things about um, you know, making the code base sort of easier to, easier to um, get up to speed with. And then there's many issues when dealing with shapefiles. I don't know how many of you uh, have encountered this where um, you edit a single record in a shapefile and all the IDs, all of the IDs D's change, so you get a false positive when you're doing a diff, which is a, which is a kind of an annoying thing to deal with. There's ways around that, but it is a problem we face all the time. And then, of course, again, I'm not a lawyer, but there's certainly licensing questions here. How does, how does share alike apply in this case when I've stuck some data into a same repository? I mean, it's not in the same um, layer in the repository, but how to, uh, it's sort of unclear how share alike would apply in this, in this case. Um, and so, again, the path forward, what's, uh, we, we, we and many other people um, would like to um, work towards a more distributed future for OSM. And I don't know if this is the answer or it's one potential answer, but uh, working towards a more distributed future for OSM. And, you know, working with local repositories rather than just static extracts and tracking the history and versions of change locally as well as staying in, in sync with Planet. And again, giving local or domain specific or thematic groups more control over the changes to their data using pull request. And uh, being able to track changes to source data over time in a, in a sane and, and easy way. And again, it, it, the real goal here for us as Boundless is to give authoritative agency a pathway to stay involved, in, involved over time rather than just throw all their data over the wall. Um, and so that's it. Uh, happy to answer some questions. Um, that's my Twitter handle and my email address. So any questions?